Welcome back, this is Dr. Jen Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. Today we're going to talk about quercetin and seasonal allergies. Here in the Northeast, the trees and flowers are blooming, and there's pollen everywhere. And this is when people get allergic rhinitis, runny nose, itchy eyes, etc. So how do we combat that? So during the season, we like to use quercetin. Quercetin consistently demonstrates the greatest activity among the flavonoids in animal studies for allergies or release of histamine. So it prevents, modulates the release of histamine from basophils and mast cells. Those are the two cells that release histamine into our bloodstream, creating that itchy, uh, runny nose sensation. Foods high in quercetin, apples, berries, broccoli, cauliflower, uh, cabbage, grapes, nuts, red onions in particular, uh, bell peppers, green tea. If you cook these foods, it reduces the level of quercetin, so you want to have them raw when possible. Quercetin also has other effects, antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, anti-cancer, antimicrobial, and it's immune modulating. Quercetin works like a zinc ionophore, right? It pushes zinc into the cells, so it helps in the sense of fighting viruses. It prevents or inhibits viral replication. So zinc ionophores uh, like quercetin can be utilized during the flu season, all right? I've actually made a separate video on quercetin and the benefits, so you want to watch that video and I'll link it below. So quercetin and seasonal allergies, there are different forms and some absorb better than others. Uh, quercetin itself doesn't absorb readily, so there are different forms that can be utilized. Alcone, anhydrous, you can use a form called a lexitin formulation. It's called a phytosome, where they encapsulate it into a fat, basically, so it absorbs better, up to 20 times better than just regular forms of quercetin. There's quercetin dihydride, hydrate, and then there's also a formula called enzymatically modified isoquercetrin, E-M-I-Q. And that's also uh, more absorbable into our system. Half-life of quercetin is three and a half to seven and a half hours. So you should take quercetin in divided doses. You can take anywhere from 500 to 1000 milligrams, two to four uh, divided doses during the day. Uh, just during peak allergy season, you don't have to take this for long periods of time. It's just more for um, managing the symptoms of allergies. So you start with the smallest dosage, right? You go 500 milligrams twice a day, see if it makes a benefit. If it doesn't, you can bump it up to 500 milligrams four times a day, and then so forth. So you don't want to start with the highest dose, you want to start with the lowest dosage and see what's going to be beneficial for you. Now, there are other uh, nutrients that are helpful for modulation in terms of circulation and uh, inhibiting histamine release. Stinging nettle, butter burr extracts, mangosteen extract, ginger is another good one. Vitamin C obviously is good for immune system and vitamin D. So if you can combine quercetin and you can add some of these in, and you don't have to add all of them, but add some of them to see if you can have the most benefit during allergy season. Now, what I find most beneficial for uh, patients is that when they get home, they shower, right? Rinse off all the pollen off their uh, body so they don't carry it into the bed. Also, an anti-inflammatory diet can also be quite beneficial because it reduces the inflammatory load in our body. Therefore, if you do get allergens into our system, you don't have an overactive uh, or exuberant reaction to pollen. So those are some of the strategies. And if you like these types of videos, um, give a like below. And we'll see you guys next week on the healthy side. Have an awesome day.